Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, January 3rd, 2022. That's right. It is the new year. I hope everybody had a great New Year's and is ready and prepared to take on 2022. We're going to try to help you do that well. And speaking of that, I want you guys to think about, we're going to talk about some of this, uh, the strategies and sectors that you should be focusing on going into 2022 and some of the opportunities that we see uh, going forward over the next few days. Hi, my name is Jeff Tomasu. I'm the co-founder of TacticalIncome.com and CEO of Espela Capital Management. If you like what you see on these videos, please hit the subscribe button. Now, let's get to my computer screens and let's get to work. All right, guys, let's get to work. It is 8.19 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is January 3rd, 2022. It is the new year. And before we get into everything, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And also, if you like this video, hit the like button. But before we get into everything, I want to just go over some of the major indices. Uh, we'll do a little market cap and then give you some of the stocks that I'm looking at. And if you guys didn't do your preparation um, going into the new year, or you're trying to figure out what to do uh, to figure out uh, how well you did last year, how bad you did, what strategies worked really well, I put a link from uh, a video I did uh, last December on how to prepare for the new year. Check out that link uh, in the description below. I think it will help a lot of you kind of just kind of get an idea of what you should be doing or you should have done to prepare yourself for 2022. Um, and I think that would help a lot. Um, look on the tactical income uh, trading platform right now. I have the SPY. The SPY, uh, the S&P 500 was up 27% last year. Uh, the IWM was up 13.4% uh, last year. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 18.8% last year. And the NASDAQ was up a 26.81% uh, last year. So you could see that the S&P 500 actually outperformed all the other markets out there. And uh, very important to know just to kind of give yourself an idea of how big uh, it was. Now, the average return over, I don't know how many years, I think over, I think it's 100 is about, you know, 10 and a half or 11%. So on the average, you know, we, uh, the S&P performed extremely well. And over the last three years, the, the S&P has been performing and unbelievable. The QQQ, same way. The overall market, and even if you just go out, and I love to talk to our subscribers about going from the macro to the micro on uh, charts, you can see just the, the move that we've had since the bottom of the pandemic has been pretty, uh, pretty epic. Uh, you know, when you look at the SPY, you look at the NASDAQ, you look at the Dow, and the IWM uh, has had a great move and then it's just been sitting in a consolidation pattern um, over the past, uh, the, you know, since February of last year. And we've talked about that uh, so many freaking times last year. And it's going to be interesting because we'll be able to watch and see what happens. I love that kind of stuff. The last thing I want to bring up is I think all of you should know, right, what uh, asset classes were the best performers. And this is, I'm going to bring over a, 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 a graphic from uh, FinViz, which is one of, I love using this site. So if anybody doesn't know this site, it's finviz.com. It's just a very, it's a free site. Gives you a lot of interest in tools. But this is really key to look at. Just at going into the new year, right? You should understand what asset classes performed the best and which ones performed the worst last year. And you get a good feel that, you know, hey, we were in a fl inflation, um, you know, high inflation kind of uh, environment last year. And you can see commodities outperformed a lot of, uh, uh, you know, perform um, performed unbelievably. And this is what we talk about at Tactical Income when we teach our students is about non-correlation, which is so important to have inside your portfolio 
instead of focusing on the S&P 500, where you can see right in here, I'm uh, I'm circling it with this little finger here. There's the S&P 500, uh, the S uh, 500, the Nasdaq 100. They're moving because obviously the uh, the futures are moving, and this is uh, following all the futures. And you could see down here, uh, palladium was the worst, the VIX was the worst, silver, platinum, uh, the Japanese dollar. But again, going back to non-correlation, again, if you're focusing on the S&P, the NASDAQ, and then you come down here, you see the Dow, and you see the Russell, there are so many other products uh, that you could be adding into your portfolio that can help you make money. And again, this is one of our core principles and the way we run our hedge fund is to have a bunch of these products or all these different type of products with inside and using option strategies and future strategies to take advantage of different moves on diff on non-correlated time frames, long, short, uh, intermediate, all that. So if you're interested in learning a bit more about the tactical income way, I put a link in for uh, a boot camp that uh, we do for all uh, new, um, you know, people who want to learn about options and learn the tactical income way. It's, I put a link in there and, uh, you get a bunch of goodies, uh, for a, I believe a very cheap price. So check out that link. If you're interested in learning, uh, how to use options, uh, with an edge. So with all that said, and all that gone again, the S and P 500 right now is up about a half a percent. And you can see that we've been kind of consolidating after the little move down move that we had going, uh, you know, going into uh, December, right? We had a little sell off, a little run back up and then kind of sitting here. And what I like to do, you can see this in all the indices, pretty similar, right? The chart looks exactly the same. And for me, who's been away on vacation for the last, I don't know, two weeks, the end of the year, you know, when you're, uh, this does, we do this a lot. I talk to our subscribers on uh, Thursday about it on their coaching calls is the fact that, Hey, you know, at the end of the year, a lot of fund, fund managers, you know, like to lock in their profits, right? And what I mean by profits is that we get paid every quarter, uh, and we get paid on that performance. So a lot of people kind of, and you could see that with the volume and a lot of what happened last week in the NASDAQ, in the S&P, volume was extremely low uh, going into year end, uh, meaning that not many people were trading um, or at least the bigger you know, funds like the pension funds, the, the, the massive hedge funds, the sovereign wealth funds weren't trading. So keep that in the back of your mind. And I think the next few days are gonna be key. And for me, not being, in, you know, being involved over the last 10 days, I like to go back to my 10 day kind of chart to kind of give me a feel of where the market has been, right? So, um, you know, I go back and I look at this 10 day chart and you can see we had a nice little rally going into Christmas and, and then it just kind of consolidated the last week. So over the next, I believe the next few days are going to be kind of critical. You're going to get a lot of jockeying, a lot of uh, price movement in the major indices and in some stocks because you have all this new money coming in at the end of, uh, from the end of the year into the new year. You're going to have people kind of moving their portfolios around. So let's not get a head fake, not don't get so excited uh, on what's going on and let the market kind of show you um, where it's going to go over the next five to 10 days. So I would, you know, to me, I like to take a very cautious kind of, you know, and uh, view of the, the opening, you know, the first 10 days of trading because I don't want to get one, you know, bullish, you know, overly bullish or overly bearish on anything that happens in the first 10 days of the year. And now that's come back and bite me in the ass a little bit, uh, you know, a couple of Januaries because we've had, we've been, you know, have had very bullish Januaries uh, the last uh, last few years. But again, opportunities are going to come along throughout the whole uh, the the whole year, right? Don't feel like you're going to miss out on anything. I think that is a huge uh, takeaway from 2021 because there's always going to be good opportunities. Everybody felt like they missed out on some meme uh, movement in the beginning or the end of January, February of last year. And there was many opportunities where you could have got back in to those and take advantage, uh, even though if you missed out on the first move. So um, again, keep that in the back of your mind. 
of when going through these indices. I, you know, to me, when I look at them, I'm seeing, hey, they're sitting at all time highs, right? When you look at these. So what would make the stocks, uh, you know, in these indices go higher? Um, you know, what would, uh, these are the questions I would be asking myself, what would push it higher? And, you know, you, that is, again, I believe, you know, something that we're going to see over the next 10 days. I think, you know, if with that higher interest rate environment, right, you expect some uh, sector rotation to happen in the overall market. You know, you would possibly see the, you know, the, the NASDAQ maybe underperform, the IWM outperform, but we haven't seen that. So, but that's in the back of my head of what could happen. And when I think about a higher rate environment, I think about, hey, what stock should I be focusing on, right? And when you think about a higher inflation, that's something that we're going to be talking, that you're going to hear a lot of talk about over the next uh, few months, right? You're going to hear about higher inflation, uh, higher inflation, higher interest rates, what outperforms, will stocks outperform, what stocks outperform? Well, again, I want to focus on it. I want to see what happens in the financial sectors, right? The JP Morgans, the Goldman Sachs, and start to go through all those, the industries. And on the tactical income trading platform, if you bring up, you know, Goldman Sachs and you come over and you try to find, you go to the, you know, the industry here on the tactical income and overview, you see financial services, capital markets, you could get a nice view of all the stocks that are in, you know, that industry. If you type in JP Morgan, right, you'll go in here, banks, you click on it, you can go through all the different banks that might perform extremely well in a higher rate environment. And then you start to build a watch list and follow those stocks. And then once you have those stocks, you can obviously start to figure out what type of strategies am I going to use? And you look at the chart and you say to yourself, all right, if I believe uh, JP Morgan might go up in this environment, well, I can take a longer term view and buy the stock and, or I can use options to take advantage of that, especially if you have you know smaller accounts. You could be buying call spreads and you could be using figuring out what time frame you want that you know you believe this is going to be happening in. And then you can use option strategies throughout the year to take advantage other option strategies to take advantage of the different type of moves like selling puts, selling put spreads, selling call spreads uh, at, you know, different time periods uh, to do that, to make over, to make money over to over, over the long haul. So uh, those are some of the industries, you know, this is one industry I'm going to be looking at. Uh, you know, the reopening trade is something that we talked about all last year, something we'll be looking at this year in, in Boeing um, you know, in, uh, some of the hotels, um, you know, like Hi uh, Hyatt, Hilton, um, all these type of stocks that you should be making, uh, lists on should be focusing on and, you know, and then the airlines, right? This is some of these airlines that have been, you know, struggling, having very volatile, I mean, very volatile, but again, when you can play these ups and downs, you know, by selling call spreads and put spreads, um, on these and using different time frames, you can make some really good money. Um, now, some stocks that we I've been uh, uh, focusing on that I think you guys should focus on uh, over the next few days is I looked at uh, D O D D O G, and they're these similar patterns you're going to see, right? This is something that we talk about at Tactical Income all the time. Is find patterns that you know work for you know more you know more often than not. And I like these, you know, when you get these big downs and you see, hey, listen, it tried to break down here, tried to break down here, couldn't. Now it's coming up to a nice little area right in here where, hey, if this breaks out, we can go back to our all-time highs. And how do you play those breakouts? Well, you could be buying call spreads. You can buy deep in the money calls if you don't have the money in your account. You could be buying the stock outright. And you know, putting stops under this low, or obviously if you want to take the risk on, which is a lot of risk, you can be looking in, into here. Um, you know, so I like DDOG. This is a good stock to look at. Um, what's the other one? BABA, right? Last week, towards the end of the week, we had some news on Chinese stocks, right? A lot of Chinese stocks had, it got 
destroyed in 2021. Well, there's something that I'm just going to be, that's another sector that we would be watching. Again, you can create watch lists and just go through these stocks over and over every day. But the one thing I liked about Baba last week, it had this on the on December 30th, had an 8.86% and, uh, up move, right? On really big volume. The down move the next day was on slight lower volume. This is something that I'll be watching over the next couple of days. And you have a clear out, right? You have the low that was set in on December 3rd. You have a low right here on December 29th at, uh, you know, 1010 spot 38. The other low is uh, 108 spot 70. So you can buy the stock, take some risk on and see what happens. Or again, buy call spreads, buy deep in the money calls. And if you're very bearish on, um, you know, on these Chinese stocks, I mean, any up move, you can be selling put, uh, you can be selling uh, buying put spreads, selling call spreads um, to take advantage of that. You know, for me, it's really hard to sell these uh, stocks that have been beating up um, over and over. It just, it, it, I just don't have it in me to sell those up moves because I could feel like they can have massive up moves like we saw here between October 4th and October 21st. And I know, you know, this is where you should be taking advantage. It's just really hard for to do it. You can definitely do it by doing uh, selling call spreads and buying put spreads so you have defined risk. The other uh, sector before I end this, because I don't want to go, so, I mean, I've gotten 15 minutes already, but again, uh, EV stocks, Tesla is on everybody's radar. They have, uh, you know, delivered a lot more cars uh, in this quarter than people expected. The stock is up over six and a half percent. And we saw that last week where you saw XPEV, a lot of the Chinese EV stocks were up. Yeah, uh, you know, and this is going to be, you know, going back to Tesla, you're, this is a stock that, you know, put in, you know, had this little uh, downward slope coming off and then kind of started to find some support around the 900 area. And now, you know, popped up, started to sell off a little bit and now it's back up here. Now, you know, to me, you know, what do you, I can't do anything at Tesla today. Right, but what I'm going to be watching is to see what it does at this level up here in the 1200 uh, the 1200 area. Does it fail up there? Does it blow through? But I'm going to be patient. There's going to be a lot of opportunities through the year to uh, get involved in some of these EV stocks. Like I said, Tesla, uh, XPEV, again another one, uh, Neo, and you know what I love to do again is create those watch lists. They're up here. You can see EV stocks. You got Ford, Neo, uh, XPEV, Tesla, Nikli, uh, Nikola, um, LI, um, you know, LI Automotives. I mean, there's so many that you can follow. You put them in the list. You start to watch, and then you look for opportunities. So um, again, you know, the the and then the lastly, before we end this is you got to keep an eye on NVIDIA, which one of the best performing stocks in the S&P last year. You got to look at AMD. These are tech stocks that have had that move that I just showed you that a lot of these stocks have, right? The big up, the pullback, a consolidation here, almost like a little cup and handle. That's what you're seeing in the AMDs, the NVIDIAs. Uh, Facebook is another stock that I uh, that is forming that kind of, you know, uh, cup and handle kind of base there. Um, and how do you take advantage of these, right? This is the, this is the, um, that was, I'm sorry, that was AMD. This is uh, uh, Facebook is again, you buy to be, uh, you know, the reason why we like using call spreads is that, you know, hey, when you're buying calls, you have a, uh, the, the decaying factor. So we like to teach our subscribers how to put to, get, to be able to take care, take advantage of the up move but also start to try to not eliminate, but make the beta decay not as bad when you're trying to uh, buy calls on a stock and take a directional play on some of this. So, hey guys, I know I've thrown a lot at you. I just wanted to give you kind of a, an overview of some of the areas that we're looking in and where you should be focusing, some of the strategies that you should be using and kind of the thought process that you should be using to take advantage of some of these stocks. I'll try to make these a little shorter going forward now that we started back up. 
And uh, and just remember, hey, check out the links that we put in there for the boot camp last year. Uh, you know the video that I have for last year of getting prepared. And remember, when trading, trade with an edge. And we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.